Hey everybody, I'm Retro Pie Guy, and welcome to another episode of Forgotten Favorites, where we dive into some of our favorite retro video games ever made. So I'm going to give you guys a bit of a surprise today, throw you for a loop, because we're going to be jumping into a game that is widely regarded as the worst video game ever created, and that's E.T. for the Atari 2600. This has been widely documented in a bunch of documentaries over the years. Most known is Atari Game Over. This is a phenomenal documentary that really kind of highlights both Atari and the beginning of their downfall, as well as this particular title, E.T. This particular title was created in 1982 by Howard Scott Warsaw, who actually created a bunch of Atari 2600 games. Most known are Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was a massive hit to follow the Indiana Jones movie, as well as Yar's Revenge, which is my personal favorite Atari 2600 game. So what went wrong with E.T.? Well, a bunch of things went wrong with E.T. before the game was even created. First off, it was decided that they were going to create this game in 1982 at the end of July. The due date for the game was going to be September 1st, a mere six weeks later. Typically, games back then would take anywhere from 6 to 12 months to create. This game was going to be created in just six weeks. Steven Spielberg was in charge of deciding who was going to develop it. He chose Atari and specifically Howard Scott Warsaw to create this video game. He had dealt with Howard Scott Warsaw on Raiders of the Lost Ark's video game, which was a massive success. So he felt that he was going to be the best choice for E.T. So they met and Spielberg actually wanted a video game that would be very similar to Pac-Man, which was a massive success at that time. Howard Scott Warsaw said that he thought that would be a disservice to his uh, recently created film and he thought that he could go a different route with it that would be much better. So Howard Scott Warsaw came up with this idea to create a game where you played as E.T. and you explored different maps and you found in different pits and various areas in the actual game three different components that you put together to create a phone. The phone was then used to call home, which he does in the film, and he's able to get beamed up into a little spaceship and leave planet Earth. So I think that the idea for the gameplay here is absolutely outstanding. I think that it keeps to the same storyline as the original film. And, you know, it, the execution was not great. But to be fair, Howard Scott Warsaw had six weeks or so to put this video game together. It was overhyped and it was marketed to be sold as the it game for that Christmas season, which it actually did sell quite a bit. The issue was it was frustrating to play, super challenging, and people got sick of it really quickly. So what ended up happening was it was hyped up as the big it game for that year. Stores started buying it. They ordered a ton from Atari. And then as people started to get it and play it, word got out that it just wasn't up to par with the expectations. People started returning it. So then the stores started canceling their orders. This led to Atari creating a massive amount of these that ended up being returned or orders ended up being canceled. So they ended up with so much inventory on this game that they didn't need. And that's where you start hearing about stories like the massive dump that they did where they basically took all these extra cartridges that were no longer being used and they loaded them into a landfill. So that's all documented in the Atari Game Over documentary, which I highly recommend again. So if I can find a um, link to this documentary, I'm not sure if it's on YouTube or not, but I saw it on um, Amazon Prime and it was on Netflix at one point. So it's out there, it's really easy to find, but if it is on YouTube, I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can click through and check that out. Because again, it is an absolutely phenomenal documentary. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. So we're going to jump into this game. We're going to test it out. We're going to see how maddening it can be at times because it can definitely be frustrating. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get through it. Most people don't, but um, we'll give it a go and I'll show you exactly what it entails, what the object is, and you know the kind of different challenges and struggles that you face along the way with E.T. for the Atari 2600. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, here we go. E.T. 1982 Atari 2600. Let's give it a go. So this is how it starts. Your E.T. You come getting beamed down into uh, this little forest area on your little flying saucer spaceship. Looks like an escape pod, but um, same deal. You can navigate in any of the four directions. You can go up, down, left, or right. And basically what you want to do is you want to explore different pits in here, but you're going to see what those are in a second. Here's a pit that I didn't even know existed here. Some of them you can see on the screen, which I'll show you in a second. Some of them you just fall into. And don't worry, you're going to spend more time in pits like this right here. Um, some of them you can get out of. Some of them you just keep falling back into. So, boom, right back into the same one. And it's really frustrating. And um, that's where people lose their minds with this game. 
there's no real like rhyme or reason as to how you get in and out of these pits. I just keep falling into the same one. So what I end up doing is moving over to like the other side, doing the same thing. You hold down your button, ET gets this long neck. That's an FBI agent. You wanna avoid those at all costs. He clearly got me. And basically they take you, they put you here and you start over. Um, it doesn't benefit you at all, but you do get to keep whatever objects you've found so far. So you can see that little object up there. It looks like a C in the top left corner. I picked that up in that original pit. I still get to keep that until I lose my life and have to start over. So that's son of a... See how it gets a little maddening at times. And uh, we're only like 30 seconds in. So the pits are good and bad. You want to go into these pits because you want to find the different components to an interplanetary phone that you use at the end of the game to phone home. And then you get beamed out of this little area here. So I'm going to jump in that pit before I get grabbed by that FBI agent. And sometimes they're waiting for you at the top, some of them, sometimes they're not. Um, so you kind of got to hold that button when you get out of the pit to try to get away from it. So here I was able to get away. You can tap your button on here to run a little bit faster if you have the FBI agents right on your ass. Um, you know, you can get out of there a little bit quicker, but uh, for the most part, they, they get you. And they don't have to even be close to you to get you. This is where, again, it gets a little frustrating sometimes. So if you play this a bunch of times and you remember like where, which pits you want to go in and which ones you want to try to avoid, then um, you could definitely get pretty good at it. Now, I can't remember which pit I was in two seconds ago, so that doesn't apply to me. I'm just not good at this. I'm showing you guys just to uh, try to, um, you know, introduce you to this game and show you that it's not the worst game ever made. I'm not doing it any justice right now because it looks pretty awful and pretty frustrating. But there's something about this game that um, maybe it's the fact that I can't accept that I'm awful at something. So I just have to like keep going and try to get somewhere with it. Um, maybe that's it. And maybe that's it for a lot of people that do enjoy this game because it does have that cult following even though it's regarded as an awful game. Um, and part of that's due to the documentaries and stuff that have really highlighted over the years. But um, it definitely has a cult following and, you know, people do enjoy playing this game. It's not, it's got the right components to it and it's got the, the right ideas. The execution here is poor. Like there's some glitches right here. Look at these glitches. These are glitches because of the fact that, I mean, I got away from the FBI agent, so I'll take that. But these are glitches because you took a game process that should take you nine months on average back then to create and you try to cram it into six weeks. So there's no way to really go in and troubleshoot everything properly and test everything out, you know, when it's being rushed to be released in time for, you know, Christmas season or whatever the case may be. So I got lucky here, but I'm about to die. You can see the health is on the right hand side, but Elliot does come in here to revive you. Um, but you know, he's got to revive you and you still got to know what you're doing when you come back to life. That's where I fall short here. So, um, I was trying to navigate around there and obviously came into a different area. So the maps are a little bit frustrating too, because it's not easy to navigate. Like I was just trying to walk around that pit to not fall into it. And I ended up in a different map entirely. So, um, we do have the little navigation thing at the top there. It tells you different directions. I'm not really sure how to use it. Um, I kind of try to follow it, but um, again, I'm not very good at this. So I'm going to get revived again here. Um, but my health is pretty poor and worse than my health. My experience with this game is really bad. So I um, got another little item there. Not sure if that is going to do me any good. It turned the C up there into an E. I think that's a good thing, but again, I'm gonna die long before I uh, do anything with it. So I can't even get out of this pit. Dead again. Elliot's at the rescue. Elliot looks like, uh, what is it, Bert or Ernie? Which is the one with the striped? Bert? Ernie, I don't know. It's been a while since I watched Sesame Street, but he does look like Bert or Ernie, right? With the uh, stripes there. 
Let's see. Let's see if I can even, is, like, I can't even get out of the pit here. And I'm holding the button and everything. Just super sensitive and... I can understand why in 1982 people lost their shit for this, because, um... I didn't get this as a gift for Christmas that year. I wasn't born yet. If you got this as your Christmas gift that year, and you started playing it, and this is what you experienced, you'd be like, screw this. Um, but I'm playing it for free, decades later, and um, I don't find it as maddening. strike 13 here and then you got the FBI guy there waiting for you so it's like how do you win <laughs> luckily you get a lot of health when you first start out but you burn through it pretty quick on here so I'm gonna jump out of this because you can see I'm getting absolutely nowhere but um, and I'm also not really uh, proving that this game isn't the worst game ever made, but um, you can see that there's definitely parts to this that were, the idea was right, the execution wasn't right. Um, if they had taken the additional few months to put this together, it'd be a different game entirely, but um, because it was rushed, you know, you end up with a game that's super sensitive, super glitchy, and really, really frustrating like this. So, let's jump out of this one. All right, guys, so you can see from this game, it is maddening, it is frustrating, it's super challenging. I've seen people on YouTube get through these in a matter of minutes. I've seen an entire long play of this done in a short period of time. Um, I think it was like seven or eight minutes or so. Um, that's not me, it's never gonna be me. I can't remember which you know pits I went in, which pits you could find stuff in. Um, if I really sat down and tried to figure it out and devoted, you know, much of my life to this yeah i could get there but i like to just casually get in here and get frustrated and then um you know leave so that's me um for me it's like it's it's like a sickness because you can't i can't accept that i'm bad at something so i have to like keep trying to be better at it and with a game like this it it drives you a little crazy but if you just look at the elements of this game and the fact that it was developed by somebody um, that created massive hits, you know that their capabilities were there. It's just that the game was rushed so much that they didn't go back through it and iron out some of the kinks. And you know, for that reason, you get the uh, gameplay experience that you have here where it's super frustrating. And um, if they just ironed out the issues with the pits where when you try to get out of them, you can actually get out of them, then you would have an entirely different game here and I think that it would have been regarded as one of the better games, not one of the worst. So um, all that said though, I, I do enjoy it. I think that it's um, definitely a pivotal game for that time period. It's um, something that, you know, is a constant reminder that you have to um, do things right and take the amount of time needed to put together a game like this. And Obviously, it looks super basic by today's standards, but for 1982, it was super advanced to put together all this stuff. You know, you have to think back to what did the other games look like at that time period, and um, this one is a major advancement in a lot of ways. So, it is what it is, but um, definitely not the worst game ever made. Um, even with all the little glitches and frustrations here, definitely not the worst game. There's tons and tons and tons of games out there that are just entirely unplayable. This is playable. It's just a frustrating play and a uh, extremely challenging play. But a lot of people play this game, especially with all the documentaries out now and, um, you know, all the different things highlighting this game and its uh, place in time. And then you have the information that, you know, they took all these games that were returned to Atari, loaded them up on like a uh, dump truck and dumped them into a landfill. It's just like this fascinating story that people are just enamored by. So um, definitely check this game out. You know, it's, it's 
I'm gonna tell you right now, I've warned you a thousand times in this short video here, it's frustrating and it's gonna drive you a little bit crazy, but it's still a cool game to dive into. And even if it's just like a trip down memory lane for you, if you've played this as a kid, or if it's a game that you never played because it came out, you know, years and years or decades before you were even born. Like for me, it was put out uh, eight years before I was even born. So it's cool to just go back in time and play games that were released prior to, you know, the time when you were actually experiencing them. Um, but it serves its purpose and it's uh, enjoyable to some degree for somebody. So check it out, give it a go. Let me know how frustrated you get with it. And um, definitely check out those documentaries on it because it's there's just so good. The um, Atari Game Over and then Netflix has High Score, which is also really cool show, but it has an episode that dedicates a good portion of it to this particular game and to Atari. So definitely check those out. You know the drill though. If you enjoyed this episode, smash the like button. Be sure to subscribe for future episodes. We do a new episode every Monday and Thursday night on here for Forgotten Favorites. So definitely subscribe, stay in the loop. So until next time, I'm Retro Pie Guy. This is Forgotten Favorites. Thanks for watching today.